All right, so I think I know why there's no videos on transpulmonary pressure because respiratory physiology sucks. But I'm going to try to explain this in a way that might make a little bit of sense. Um, starting off with the, uh, the pressures, it's described as millimeters of mercury per water. Uh, we're just going to call it zero and negative five. So the atmospheric pressure is equal to the intraalveolar pressure, which is zero. And then you have the intrapleural pressure uh, between the visceral uh, pleura and the parietal pleura against the uh, thoracic wall. That's uh, minus five. Okay, so minus five. Think of it as like a vacuum. And anytime you have a vacuum, like if you, uh, you have a, 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 a negative pressure, so if you were to take a uh, some sort of plastic compliable container and you were to suck it in, like some of us have done at some point, and it, shrink, it shrivels up. Well, you're creating a vacuum, and that's going to start pulling toward your face. Well, in the same uh, manner, the lung gets pulled toward the uh, thoracic wall, right, because of the negative pressure. That's what helps, helps keep the lung uh, expanded. Now, when we breathe in, uh, the... Uh, diaphragm contracts uh, through the uh, C345, uh, phrenic nerve, C345 keeps the diaphragm alive. Uh, the diaphragm drops, the pressure, the uh, volume goes up, and Boyle's Law states that if the volume goes up, the pressure goes down. And when the pressure goes down, that creates a pressure gradient. The air from the outside now flows to the path of least resistance, like everything does in nature, and the air comes in. So during a normal breathing cycle, um, the, you, know, you create a negative pressure gradient, but at, at some point, the pressure is actually going to equilibrate and it's going to reach zero again, and that's when the actual breath stops. And then when you exhale, again, you're breathing out, it's becoming less negative till it, till it hits zero, and then the breath stops and the respiratory cycle continues. Now, you can go above and beyond that point, but then you start getting into the forest and forest expiratory reserve volume and inspiratory, and I'm, I'm not going to get into all that, but um, so you have that. Now, going back to the, um, the lungs, so you have this um, um, negative pressure of, of minus 5. Now, if you look at the, uh, the transpulmonary pressure, uh, I believe the... Uh, that's described as the intrapleural pressure minus the uh, intra, I'm sorry, the intrapulmonary pressure minus the intrapleural pressure. Um, the way I look at transpulmonary pressure uh, is I look at the I, I consider it the same thing as the elastic recoil, and some of you may have heard about elastic recoil. Now the lung has recoil uh, properties, but in and by itself, the lung just is, is dead. It, it doesn't do anything. Uh, it's it recoilability is all this force that's being generated back and forth is coming about through the ability of the uh, lung to get pulled outwards and then inwards, and that is that force is generated by the abdominal muscles, the thoracic wall moving in and out, right? So, if you, look, if you think about a uh, plastic bag, if you blow into the bag, it doesn't have any elastic recoil, right? So, you're increasing the volume, but the pressure stays the same. Now, if you take a balloon, and you blow in a balloon, and you increase the balloon, now you, ha you have some elastic pressure that's being now directed inward, right? And that's increasing the, uh, the pressure within the balloon. So when you inhale, the lungs expand, and you're now generating, generating a force that's being pressed backwards now uh, with the lung, and that's... Uh, Consider, and look at that as transpulmonary pressure. So the breath coming in of the lungs uh, expands the lungs. And as the lungs expand, the more the lungs expand, the higher the transpulmonary pressure goes up. Okay? 
So think about that along with the uh, elastic recoil. Um, when, if you think about the uh, visceral pleura on the lung and the uh, parietal pleura on the rib cage, as you inhale, the uh, lung, the rib cage goes out, and you're getting. Remember, I was talking about the elastic recoil being generated, being generating a force inward. Well, that's creating a space between the visceral pleura and the parietal pleura. And going back to Boyle's law, when you increase the volume, the pressure decreases, right? So uh, the numbers that I came across, you have. Uh, so you have a minus five pressure normally. Well, that drops down to a, 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 a negative eight. Now, if you look at the, the alveoli, uh, you have a certain space in the alveoli. When the lungs expand, that alveoli is also increasing, right? So as the alveoli space increases, the pressure decreases. So I think that's where the, uh, the true definition of the uh, transpulmonary pressure comes from because you're taking the difference between the intrapulmonary, which is the same thing as the uh, intraalveolar space, uh, and you're uh, subtracting it from the um, intrapleural uh, space. So you're getting two negatives. So I look at that as being you're just increasing the negative value, so you're increasing it, which and that's kind of correlating to the increase in transpulmonary pressure. But I don't look at that aspect of it because that just seems to be confusing. So I look at transpulmonary pressure as relating to the elastic recoil of the lungs, and as the lungs expand, you're getting increased pressure. Uh, that's being generated by the elasticity of the lungs, and that's increasing the transpulmonary pressure. Transpulmonary pressure is uh, directly related to the amount of air that's coming in. So the amount, the larger the lungs expand, the higher the transpulmonary pressure uh, increases. Okay, and uh, and then again, the intrapleural pressure as the um, intra as the lungs expand uh, and get bigger, the intrapleural pressure decreases. So those two variables are inversely related, whereas the transpulmonary pressure and the lungs expansion is directly related. Um, hopefully that helps. If not, I'm sorry I tried. <laughs>